Sounds good. Here we go. And broadcasting automatically gets the recording going. Okay. Chat on there. And let's see. Okay, everybody's coming in now. How you doing, guys? Hey, Gilbert. Hey, Margaret. Don't forget on the chat, guys, uh, all panelists and attendees. So on the chat, click on two and then select all panelists and ten attendees. Hi, Mark. How you doing? No, I've been working, actually. <laughs> Gilbert. <laughs> Hey Joel, how you doing? Hey Joel, are you coming to New York? Hey James, Stephen, how you doing? Hey Margaret, what a trade that was today. I'm good. We did a 150 tick trade on uh, on the ES and micro ES today using the roller coaster. So we're going to talk about that in a little while. Did you take profit, Margaret? Hey, Greg. Okay. You did, Greg. Well done. That was a good profit. I enjoyed that trade. I came, I took the dog award, guys. We'd already set the uh, trade. It was already in short on ES. I'll go through it in a little while on roller coaster. And uh, took the dog for a walk, came back. It was about 100 and so ticks in profit. Ended up taking about 150 or 136 or something like that. So it's a great trade. I will show you, Trevor, later. I'm just going to go through a little bit of theory first. Hi, Brenda. <laughs> It'll take time, Margaret. I know you, you're, you're new to the inner circuit. It'll take time, okay? Patience, and we'll talk. You know, we'll 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 keep doing it every day. We're just going to keep coming in, keep doing it. Hey, Gary. Okay, so we're getting lots of people in now. Just going to give it one more minute, then we'll get going. You're welcome, Margaret. Hey, Don. Okay. Right, so this is being recorded again, um, and today is purely on roller coaster, guys. So don't ask me questions on Elliott Wave or bits. Today is purely roller coaster. Next week, it will be the trilogy. So we would look at examples where you can use the indicator suites together. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mark. Um, so, you know, today's purely roller coaster, but next week we'll look at uh, roller coaster and alleyway, for example, together, uh, roller coaster and bits, that sort of thing, and try, trying to give you some examples where they can work well together. Okay. Uh, but for today, we're just concentrating on the roller coaster. Lots of questions coming out on that. So, let's get going on that. So, let's go through. So, one of the things that we want to talk about is this strategy, the roller coaster strategy is quite complex. Um, the, with the MACD, the stochastic cross, the points of control, there's, it would make a, a chart very, very busy. Okay. So what we've done is with that, we've, we've hidden everything behind the scenes. The algorithm works it out, just puts the entry, the stop, uh, and the, uh, the, trading, uh, the trading stops in there. So rather than make it overcomplicated, we do all the heavy lifting for you. Uh, all you've got to do is keep it simple, work on your linear support and resistance zones, your channels, and all the things that I mention every single week and every time you guys have been all to these live training events. It's one of the big things that I look at there, making sure you've got enough room uh, for the trade. So let's get going. So it's a high probability combination strategy. So we, the first thing is the stochastic. This is the main drive. It's the leading momentum indicator. So 
I'm not going to go into percentage D, percentage gay, smoothing, and all the settings and everything. You don't need to worry about that. What you need to understand is, is the stochastic is the main driver. This is where we get the name roller coaster from, because in theory, we like to go from overbought to oversold to overbought to oversold. Okay. Yes, keep forgetting those support resistance zones, Trevor. Not a good thing. It should be part of your daily routine. I sound so far away, Marie. I'm in Europe. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Is that any better? I'm put the mic closer to my big mouth. Okay. So the next is the MACD, that's the navigator, that's my wife, the backseat driver, okay? It's a trend following indicator. Uh, so this is like your first backup, if you like. Uh, and then we have the points of control, the go or no go, if you like. These are three AMAs correctly aligned, we get the go. So not only does the stochastic have to be in the right position, the MACD has to back that up. Then we need the points of control correctly aligned to give us that go, if you like. So the strategies that we look for here is the, the typical roller coaster strategy when we're in a quite a large range and we're going from overbought to oversold to overbought to oversold. So this allows us to trade within a range using high this high probability combination strategy. Now, that could be on a daily time frame. It could be on an hourly. Uh, what you need to do is, and I'll, and I'll give you, I wrote an article about this, and I'll give you the link in a little while. It's about finding the groove for that particular instrument, the groove that it's in, the time frame that it's actually uh, going, you know, getting in that groove, that roller coaster groove. Then also, we look in that early in the trend. So we get in those Elliott Wave 3 impulse moves early, range breakouts and trend reversals, because the time we get into the roller coaster, we don't know if it's a big move, a correction, a trend reversal, a range breakout, or a Wave 3. All, we, all we're interested in is getting in that roller coaster trade, trading it from, uh, say, oversold to overbought, but then if it stays in the overbought zone and we get that false breakout stochastic, for example, start to form and it doesn't break out, your trading stock won't be taken. And then you're early into that trend. But at the time you enter it, you do not know. All you know is we've got a great sort of win rate. So you've got to keep uh, doing your basics again. It's like, you know, the support resistance zones, the, the, tr the trend channels, uh, what data is coming out if you do using it on futures or Forex, uh, you know, earnings if it's uh, on stocks, you need to have that in your arsenal. And what are the correlations as well? So, and the times of the day, we talked about the times of the day last week, uh, when it's best to time uh, trade what type of time frame. So we're going to go over that again, again this week. Okay, so next is... So this is what a roller coaster looks like. And I've actually put the, uh, ro the stochastic on the bottom there to begin with, just to show you, okay? Uh, it's not included in the indicator suite, but I just wanted to show you that we're going, on this trade, we're going from oversold to overbought, to oversold, eventually back to overbought. You see, we didn't get a signal on this one here. That's because we came back and took out a training stop. So when you see that on the chart, you see the entry up here on the left. Everybody see that? Say yes, Paul. And then we get the stop loss. And then we, this is the think or swim version. Uh, on the other versions, it looks more like an EMA, but this is the trading stop position. So then when we're in that overbought position, we get that false breakout bar, still keeps going, and then finally takes us out. Then we go from over bought to oversold we get the stop we get the entry we go short comes and hits one of my support and resistance zones i give you those out uh in the 5k club every week so i want to give uh, a quick question to you guys i want a y for yes or an n for no when it hits that support and resistance zone and starts to bounce back up again do you get out then or wait for that trading stop? It's not a trick question. Would you get out when it hits one of these big support resistance zones? Yes or no? 
Yes, 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 yes. Good. That's what I would do. And I know we have these trailing stops, but when you have a massive move like that, and we had one today, 150 ticks on ES, okay? When you get that massive move, you don't wait for the trailing stop. It's parabolic, yes? It's not normal, okay? It's a big, long move. Take the profit. Then we uh, test and we hang around the support and resistance zone. Then we leave the oversold zone again. We get the signal, we go long, and then we get a nice gentle move up there with a train stop taken out, okay? The false breakout stochastic is part of the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, uh, uh, Nil Jan. Uh, but I, all I've done is put it on this particular side just to show you what that looks like. I'm going to take it off on the next one because we don't, you don't need it. Yes, Brenda, the stop loss is so bloody big. If you can't afford the trade, don't trade it or go to the micros, okay? So, for example, today, the micro uh, ES, the range on that one will go through it. Trading one contract of micro ES was $110 risk. Not a lot of risk. It was a $200 win for one contract on the micro, yeah? So if it's too big, you adjust your type of contract you're going to trade. So you go to micros, which are fantastic. Uh, if you're trading stocks, you buy less shares or sell less shares. Uh, and if you're trading Forex, you buy or sell less lots, okay? You've got to adjust that. And I give, I'll give you two uh, links to two articles I've written on the blog about this later on. So, um, Hey, Paul. Uh, yeah. Hey, Raul here. I uh, just wanted... Uh, just a quick question. This is kind of a little bit more advanced, but, uh, you know, let's say the stop or the range is, is too big. Yeah. Um, rather than decreasing in size, what do you think about hedging your position? So uh, in a sense with an option. So if you're looking to go long, maybe you go long stock and long a couple of puts just to offset some of the size you might have in the common or, you know, vice versa, if it's for futures. What do you think about uh, that? I, I, that's quite a, I mean, that's probably an advanced strategy that we would have to formally put down to teach people, I think. Um, so this is the five minute time frame, Stephen. Uh, so yeah, there are, there are, you know, all the options on SPY, uh, Mark. Yeah, that's a good idea. But we, again, what I'm trying to do is keep this simple. These more advanced type strategies uh, will will have to formally put them into a course, I think, uh, before we start to, to talk about it because they can become quite complicated. Yeah, keep it simple, Gary, um, because not, not a lot of people will be able to trade those options for insurance. Um, it's a good idea, but it's more for more advanced traders. Okay. So... This just shows us where we want to go. Entry, stop, and that's the move as we go from oversold to overbought. There's trailing stop, and exactly the same sort of thing again. We just talked about that, really simple. Adjusting the trade size for that, okay? There we go. Very, very simple. That's five minute on oil. So this is US dollar, Japanese yen. Okay, so Forex pair. This is the trading view platform. Uh, and this is on the 15 minute now. So this time we get quite a tight stop and entry for this first one. Again, everything's done behind the scenes. The MACD, again, it's our secret source. So we don't share that. We don't show it. Uh, what type of MACD we use, whether, you know, it's the stochastic, everything's behind the, behind the scenes. We go long, we have the massive move out there, and then it goes sideways and then starts to come back up again. And this is the trailing stop position. It's simple. Then we get to the top. So we go from oversold to overbought. Then we get a short signal and we go short here. Really, really simple. Okay. 
So these arrows are very small on uh, TradingView, and that's all we can put on TradingView, I'm afraid. Uh, no, it's uh, Forex, Futures and Stocks, Rudy. So there's the stock, there's the entry, there's the trading stock. Okay, really simple. The only thing you've got to do is calculate what your risk is. What if it takes it all out and how much you're going to lose, okay? You don't know what your reward is because you don't know how long it's going to go. So this is one, an example on stocks. This is a trade that I actually did, okay, uh, with my inner circle, okay? So we had uh, the breakout here. We had a little short, but the main thing is what, what I wanted to get here is earnings as a catalyst. We got in just before earnings. This is an earnings play on the roller coaster, and it just jumped up, and this was the wave three. So this is getting early into a trend, okay? Getting early into a trend. Now, on this, look at the far left here. We had this triple bottom, okay? We went long on this first one because you don't know. Is it going to go? We've gone from oversold to, uh, to overbought. We go long, takes out the trailing stock. Couple of, couple of points profit, nothing, nothing major there. We're not really interested in the short there, okay? At that time, you could have gone short and made a little bit of money there as well. What I was really interested in is when it made this higher support level here than this previous one. Then we got a signal, I've got to go, okay? We've had a one, we've had a two. This was me getting in there, and that moved. Then we pulled back on a wave four, and guess what? We traded the fifth wave. So two opportunities to get in there. So little bits of profit on those ones. And again, you've got to send these testers out. You've got to trade at the the strategy as it gives you the signals because you don't know which one's the big move, okay? And then obviously that was the biggie. And then we pulled back. We had the fifth wave move and guess what? It went and hit the fifth wave move. So there was two trading opportunities on GE, on that stock on the daily time frame. If you've got a really tight range, Mike, you've got to go down to very small time frames like the minute or the two minute or the three minute, okay? If it's really tight, you just don't trade. You go, go away, do something else. There will be, James, we're, doing a, we're developing a smart list to give you signals, okay? Uh, so again, this is another example of early into the trend. Remember, we have two roller coaster examples. This is another one. This is 6B, the British pound futures. Again, we've got the low down here. And then we get the signal to go along. Again, very, very small risk here. Stops at 10309 or something like that. The entry was around 103. 1.3035 very small risk big move up takes the trailing stop out pulls back fifth wave move and the roller coaster to boot to go you in, to get you into that fifth wave move as well no jason if it's already in you're gonna you're gonna risk even more if it's early in depending on what it's in, then you could make that decision to go in. But really, you're looking at what your potential reward is to the next support resistance zone, uh, whether it's linear or non-linear. By non-linear, I mean within a channel, okay? Okay, so longer term plays. This was ETFs. Somebody asked about ETFs earlier. This is how I have played gold over the last couple of years. On the weekly time frame, okay, we had a short here. Then we had a long, okay. Now, my inner circle know this, I'm a holding GLD and I have had quite a few entries. So with this, uh, first entry here on the roller coaster, comes back down, 
takes out the trading stop, but I stay in because this is a long-term position for me. Then we get another roller coaster um, entry there, second entry, massive move up, pulls back on a wave four, trade the fifth wave. Uh, so third entry there. So this is how that GLD has progressed over the last couple of years and how increased that holding on that ETF. And as you can see, well, it's gone past that now since I made this slide, it has made that fifth wave move. So that is a very, very strong position. Okay, it is being, uh, hi Rob, it is being recorded. Hi, hi Bill. So, trade management, keep it simple. And that's what we wanted to do with this, is keep it really simple. Take the decisions away from you. Uh, yes, James, yeah, all asset classes, whether it's cri crypto, stocks, Forex, futures, CFDs, everything. Um, so I'll, I'll give you some of those examples in a little while. Um, so Netflix, stock, one hour time frame, okay? Get the entry down here, just over $300, sensible entry, stop loss, starts to print the trailing stop positions. This is where you adjust your trailing stop position after the bar close every hour. As you can see, you carry that through the days and eventually it takes you out. So you go from 300 to 332 in the space of seven days. Really great looking trade, okay? So just remind you guys, all panelists and attendees, all panelists and attendees when you're doing that. Now, this is the 60-minute chart uh, on uh, Netflix, 60-minute chart. We're going to be doing some of those, Margaret, uh, in the uh, inner circle. We'll be looking for those on Mondays and Tuesdays when everybody's back. Okay, trade management again. This is US dollar, Japanese yen on the four hourly time frame this time. Again, entry, stop. Trading stop starts to print as soon as we go through there. Well, as soon as our lagging point of control starts to get above the entry. And we just keep adjusting our trading stop after the four hour candle closes each time where we print this line. It's that simple. We get an entry short here, didn't take the stop out, look at that. Uh, this is why I say let things ride to the stop because it's a really great position there, guys. It comes back down and then just bombs down. Really good following the trade management rules. Again, the only decision you're gonna make is if you have a massive move to a big support resistance zone, you're gonna make that decision to get out earlier than wait for the trading stop in some cases. No, the trading stop doesn't start once the trade is open. The trading stop starts to print when our lagging point of control is above the entry price. Until that point, as you see here, it goes back up, just tiptoes into there, didn't take the stop out, come back down again. Once it starts to print, our lagging point of control starts to get below, that's when we start to print the trading stop. I'll look at some of those in a bit, Rudy. I just want to get through this slide deck here. So again, GE trade management, very, very simple here. Just had to follow at the end of every day, once the market was closed, adjust the trailing stop. And I'm going to show you a live example of something I'm trading right now, a little later on. Okay, so very, very, very simple. We, we, we print it for you. Yes. Oh, uh, Five minutes, Raul. Yeah. Quick, just a quick question. I hate to not keep it super simple, but uh, what do you think about setting targets out ahead of a trade? So let's say you're you enter in on a roller coaster and and you set out some targets. What do you think about that and letting kind of like the trailing stop be the runner after you locked in a little bit of profit? 
Well, the, the targets really depend on where your linear support resistance zones are because once they, once they get there, it is going to run out of juice because it's happened there before. Um, once, once, we're, once the trailing stop starts to get printed, we are risk-free, so you can let it run, okay? But if you get to a support resistance zone and it starts to run out of juice, then just take your profit rather than that. See, at this point here, this is a five-minute on ES. We start to get all of these little doges. Starts to run out of juice. It's going to pull back. It's had a massive move already. Take your profit. But that's personal preference. That that really, I can I can probably say with good confidence that's a that was a big uh, support resistance zone there. Okay, and the same with the short here. Where's where's the uh, initial target? Probably where the stop was for that first long trade. It did find a little bit of support there for a while as well, but let the trailing stop uh, do the work unless you're happy with the profits and you want to take that profits. That you know, again, it's individual, but the main thing is how where are those linear support and resistance zones? They're ultimately your targets, and they're going to make your decision whether you get in the trade or not because of the risk to reward factor. If you've not got a lot of fresh air between your entry. You stop and then the next linear support resistance zone, you're not going to get in. Okay. So what to watch out for? Support resistance zones, risk to reward. Okay. So we've got some examples here where we are in uh, support and resistance zone here. You can see these coming in. We get a signal here. It doesn't trigger. We get a signal here. Short. It does trigger, but you're not going to go into the sticky zone. When I put these zones on my charts, I treat them like uh, a, a zone of mud. Yeah, they're sticky. You don't know what's going to happen in, in them. You don't trade in them. You trade out of them. So we get these first few signals in here. They're not good for us. Then we get this first signal down here. Did I highlight these? Yes, we did. So these are no good. Yeah, they're in the zone. No entry. This one is, break, is the first one we've had to break out of the zone. Small risk. It goes for it. And then you can see there, we just run the trailing stop until it takes it out. It just keeps running, just keeps running. Let it run. This one down up here, again is good we've got enough fresh air between the stop entry and the next support resistance zone to let it run so you trade that again so you just have the winner there it's pulled back you didn't get a long signal here that's fine you wait you get a short signal here what's your bias here what's the overall trend okay the, the overall trend is bullish. You really would not take that short. If you did, you would have had a little loss, but then you got a long signal straight away. Risk reward is about one to five to that support resistance zone. That's got to be your target, okay? It was your target down here, but you still trailed the stop. It didn't make the target. It comes back down. You get another chance at that target and it hits it get out when it hits the target. Simple as that. Two great trades. So they're good. Keep it simple. That's all you got to do. So let me move that out of the way. So Raul will be running these webinars from March. I'm just, I didn't want to sort of just let him leave him in the lurch and say right do these webinars every week so Raul will be i won't be on these webinars from march because it's after midnight my time now guys so uh, it's not early um so Raul will be taking over from march doing these and they will be themed each week first week of the month alley wave second week bits third week roller coaster and then the fourth week will be the trilogy, the combination, if you like. Okay. 
Put that out of the way. I just want to go over correlations, okay? These are important to me. I'm just going to close this other chart down to the right because it's really annoying me because the data the data's changed there. So uh, these are the main correlations that I look at. And if everything's working right, uh, you know, things move in the right direction, this should be good. So again, take a screenshot of this, guys. It will be on the recording as well. I center around the dollar. Now, the dollar doesn't always lead, um, but most of these correlations will work. So dollar going up, oil goes up, gold goes down, your OGVP goes down. Now, not always the case, 80% of the time. So if gold's going down, s and is going up, bonds will go down. The dollar goes down, oil goes down, gold goes up at that same time, and so does the euro and 6V, because if the dollar's going down, the euro and the British pound get some strength. If gold's going up, S&P goes down, bonds go up. Now, these last couple of weeks have been very, very strange on these correlations. And we've learned not to trade when the correlations are not working because the probability of these things working is pretty crap, okay? Now, gold's been pretty rangy today. Uh, we did get the big move down on uh, the S&P, which we traded, okay? Uh, but that there was, there was some dollar strength. Uh, sorry, the dollar was going down with that as well. So gold was going up slowly, okay? But we got the big move down with S&P. So it doesn't always lead the dollar, but I like it to lead. Also look at RTY as the lead of the, of the index pack as well. Uh, just lately though, NQ has been taking over that role because we've had some really good earnings, but normally RTY will lead that, will lead that. Also economic calendar is your Bible. You should have that open every single day. That data and news does lead. You do not want to be in a trade, any trade, long or short, when you're going into large data, okay? You can trade around the data, but going into that data with a trade open, you setting yourself up to fail. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is bring over the trade from today, on the 60 minutes. I'm in Q, but I will change that. Bear with me. Okay, bring up the micro ES. I'm going to go big on this chart here. Okay. So this was the trade today. So this, this just go back a little while. Okay. Now, this is the 60 minute on ES. We are. In, uh, I've got a channel running here. This is a four hour channel, works very, very nice. But the main thing is I am quite confident on these indexes that they're in the groove on the 60 minute time frame. okay? So gone back uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, we get a long move here. Look at the entry above the linear support resistance zone. Boom, up to the next support resistance zone, okay? We get another one, another entry here above Freaky this, the support resistance zone, and it's a winner. We get a short, okay, coming down here. There's fresh air, no reason not to trade it. It's a little winner, not massive. We get a long, a little winner here, okay. We get a short here, it's a loser. We get some of those. So we've had one loser in two weeks, yeah. We get the short here, we go short, little winner. Long, little winner, short. We entered this about two hours or so before it actually really moved. We didn't know it was gonna be moving, okay? But everything looked weak as far as the index was concerned. There were, stocks were gapping down at the beginning of the day. They did go to close those gaps. Uh, gold looked reasonably strong and everything for, for us was pointing down, okay? So you take the trade, you get tiptoe triggered here, it comes back. Now, 
Also look where the stop is. It's above, these lines here are yesterday's high, yesterday's closed, okay? We've got the open as well. There's a lot of resistance in there for that to go up to take out the stop. So we've got protection uh, before our stop there. And then it just dived down. And we were talking, you know, the, the entry we took um, really was 3376 or whatever it was. And then look, look all the way down here, 3339, huge move. And again, it came very, very close to that linear support and resistance zone. And I just flattened. It hasn't taken out, actually, it hasn't taken out the trading stock for that yet. And we could have another little run all the way down here uh, for the rest of the night. Okay. But that was the trade today. Okay, Matty, on what uh, time frames? Three, okay. You, that's, that's right, you don't have to adjust anything. You just need to frame your charts with your linear support resistance zones, okay? So we've got um, RTY, let's go to YM, I like YM. Oops, sorry. Okay, let's go big on this one. So again, you've got lots of fresh air above and below here. That, that short trigger didn't trigger, okay? We got the big move down here. We had a little long, we've got a short that didn't work. And then we got the short here going into the close and we are still short right now, okay? It prints it for you. All you, again, all you need to do is make sure you've got enough fresh air to go. If you're uncertain, you use your Fib extension tool. So you click once on the stop. You click a second time on the entry, move it across the right, Click on the same entry price. What's your risk to reward to the next zone? It's over one to two. That's a good risk to reward there. Okay. Very, very simple. Drawing. Our questions coming in here. Do you think it's a good idea of the chart, the main contract, trade the mini on the DOM example chart? Yes. Uh, to be honest, guys, we traded the micro yesterday because the, the range was too big uh, for most traders on there. So we tried to trade the micro ES. I'm not afraid to say that. I didn't want to risk $2,000 on a, on a trade. You know, I'd rather risk a couple hundred dollars and win $600 or risk $100 and win $200, okay? It's about keep plugging the trades through that builds the, the, um, the profit, if you like. Shortest possible data. Okay, so if you're trading off the 60-minute time frame, Ninjan, uh, trade station does take a lot. You need probably 30 days, get away with 30 days. If you're on a three minutes, you only need two days, okay? Five days at maximum. So 15 minutes and below five days on, on TradeStation. Uh, on, on the 60 minute time frame, 30 minute time frame, need about 30 days. And again, you've got to look and find which ones are in the groove on which time frame. So you may have to go out 90 days on the 60 minute just to see if it's in the groove, okay? Marie, would I take a short if the bias was green? Depends on where we are, what time of the day and what we're trading, okay? So in this case, the bias is red on YM. You agree? On the, on the, bit, on the bits, the bias is red. Yeah, so we took the short trade 
Yeah, does that make sense there? Um, depends on what, what, you know, what fresh air we've got, uh, a lot of other factors. But normally, I'd like the bias on the bits to give me that indication of whether we're going long or short. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you a stocks example on uh, here, then we're going to go to a different pl type of platform. So, okay, so a couple of stocks examples here. These are trades that I'm in. Now, this is, this is a little bit complicated, but I've gone short <laughs> on NCR because I wanted to trade the fourth wave coming down. Now, this was an earnings play, and we are in profit on this. It's an inner circle trade. Uh, and we've just started to print the trading stock here, look, okay? I did enter a little bit late. Again, this is where that question came in earlier. Would you trade it if it just tiptoed in? Yes, it tiptoed in, then came back up. Decision was go just below this low here at 33.34. Uh, we're now at 50% profit times risk, and we'll be going risk fee free very soon. Now, one thing that makes me want to stay in this trade is we could get a wave four failure here because the 535 has broken the rules, okay? Uh, so, you know, I'm going to be a little bit cautious on this because this could come down and keep coming down. Where's my next linear support resistance zone? That's, that's where my target is. You know, this is here. We've got a double bottom right here. So I'm going to draw that on, okay? I don't draw everything on my charts because I just see where they are. Uh, probably I'll put a bit of a fatter zone in there, maybe something like that. But again, we've got a decent risk reward on that one and let that run. The other one is we are in risk free on this on work day now. So we're looking for a, a trend reversal here. Uh, we don't know if that's going to work. We've at the moment, we've just traded the long, okay? The trailing stop is now, the, the market is closed. So now I, the trailing stop has been printed. I adjust my trailing stop, 24.72. That's it, simple as that. We're in the trade. It's had a nice big high volume move to get us into the trade. And then we've moved up. We've had 100% profit times risk. We've had a little pullback. We've had quite a nice rejection of those lows today as well. So that's pretty good. If we get the follow through today, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, sorry, higher, high, higher, low, that'd be good. All I'm going to do is follow this trading stop now. It's in profit. Okay, Trevor, let's just look at this before we go on to the other platforms, McDonald's. So McDonald's today broke the trading stop for this trade, okay? Did bounce back off it though. For me, if you're in McDonald's, if it goes below the low of today, 2, 12, 60, I'll be looking to get out, okay? You have got resistance up here. We talked about that last week. Uh, didn't quite make that, but it's taken a trading stop out for the roller coaster. It did reject those lows today. So if it breaks those lows tomorrow or next week, it's going to come down. Okay. Right. Let's look at some examples on a different platform. Let's go to um, TradingView. Find it first. Oh, have I closed it? I think I've closed it. Bear with me. I'm just going to put it back on again. Didn't realize I've closed it. Okay, let's go to the profile first. No charts. Roller coaster. Okay, so uh, this is just to show you uh, all asset classes. So I really like the 240 on Forex and Bitcoin here. You can see Bitcoin, these were, these were big moves. Uh, you can't short Bitcoin unless you're doing uh, Bitcoin futures. But the long on Bitcoin here, 8,601, and it was taken out at 9,232. Got another long here, really, really good. And then we have 
uh, the Euro Japanese Yen, which is one of my favorites on the four hour. You've got to go back a long way to look for a losing trade on this one. So those Forex traders, Euro Japanese Yen on the four hour, it's in the groove, okay? This is what I mean by going through the time frames and looking for which the instrument on which time frame it's in the groove. Because institutional traders trade the groove, okay? It's not, it's, there's no secret source, okay? We, we've got to go back to October last year, okay? Short, winner, okay? There was a long, it didn't trigger. Long, winner, short, winner. Why am I saying winner? Because the trailing stop was printed, yeah? So there was profit taken. Winner, wasn't taken in. Winner, long, winner long, winner short, winner long, winner short, winner long, winner short. And we're in a long right now, okay? To Euro Japanese yen, you've got to find the groove, the right time frame, okay? The right time frame. So somebody wanted to look at some stocks, Amazon and Google examples. So let's go to stocks, um, Amazon, go to daily time frame. Okay. Doesn't say it responds reasonably okay, Amazon on the daily. Um, ha, that's about the same price as I got out. Not really moved since the gap up. Again, we're gapped now. There's no trade. Yeah. James, it will be an automated trading strategy this year. The first pace we're going to develop it for is Ninja Trader because they, they do automated trading. Uh, so, but we, we haven't started that development yet, but it, it is in the plans. Uh, so you'll be able to just fire and forget. Uh, so Amazon, Google. Doesn't respond too well on the daily there, does it? Again, we've got to find the right time frame that this is in the groove, okay? Don't see any losers on that uh, 240. Does it, how does it go intraday? Let's have a look at the 30 minutes. Looks okay there. Big risk, big, big, uh, big stock though, guys, this one. Unless you're trading options, it's not really a great, a great uh, stock to trade. Uh, yeah, I think 30 minute is a good time frame. Probably 15, not as good. No, you see? There's no groove there. We go to the 30 minute, I can see a better groove. 60 minute, not as good on Google. I don't see a loser, but it's, it's not in the groove as much, okay? Right, so then I wanna pull out the Ninja Trader version, okay? Pick here. That, that's a nice groove right there. That is the Euro Japanese yen. That is, it's, it's groovy, baby. I tell you, it's just, woo, you can make a lot of money on Euro Japanese yen. Four hour it is really, really cool. But you've got to be patient now. This is in. You've just got to keep an eye on it. But if we go to uh, US dollar Japanese yen on the 60, I believe. Takes a little bit of time to sort it out. Now that is a winner, winner chicken dinner. I actually made a video on Trading View about this before it happened. Okay. And then if you go down to 15 minutes, there were more opportunities to trade during this move. Okay. Nice, nice little move there. But the big move was this. I made a video on Trading View before this actually happened. Uh, on the Euro Japanese yen. Big range bound period, loads of support there, okay? Slightly higher support levels, it's going nowhere. But then we get a long signal here, okay? This long signal here, you've got to take it. You've got to take it. It did take the trading stop out for break even. You didn't know whether that's going to be the move out of this range, okay? This previous one, you didn't know. You've just got to take the trades. You take this one, third time to charm in this case, and, it's, and it rockets up there, okay? 
So in the groove is actually, <laughs> believe it or not, I've wrote an article on that. So bear with me. Um, let's go to the website. Go to the blog. Mm. We're doing some work on the website at the moment, guys. So it might be slightly slow uh, because we've got thousands of images and we are... Um, do some work to actually get a system where it's not loading up. Uh, a lot on it just depends on the uh, on the on the instrument, Margaret. Again, if you're going to use smaller time frames, you've got to you got to hope you got to look and make sure it's in the groove. Um, I just it's, I'll find the link. Uh, that's me celebrating my wife going away for a week. By the way, guys. Uh, and we just find the link for the article to get in the groove. I was getting in the groove then. Can't find it now. Okay. Go to the blog anyway, guys, and you'll see it. You'll see. Um, oh, it's not there. Very strange. Blog's not working. Can't load the blog up. They must be doing some work on it right now. Let me just, I'm going to ping them where. Um, okay. Okay, so I want to go back to the TOS version a second, and I'm going to go to gold now. When gold's in a groove, it's in a groove, yeah? And it can be on a groove on a two-minute, three-minute. But if it's not in the groove and it's going range-bound, you don't trade it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the one-minute chart over. This sometimes is pretty good. Uh, on gold if it's in a range now if you don't get the trade you don't get the trades so what I do is I just go back over the last day or so is this in the groove right now on this time frame no we've had a few trades it's not really in the groove so at this moment in time until I start to see this performing on that time frame I'm just not going to trade it okay let me have a look on the three minute so I'll tell you what we'll bring the two minute over from my other charts there Whoops. Let's maximize the cell. Okay, so the two minute is in the groove. Okay. Look at this today. Short. Okay. We had a short that didn't trigger. And then we've just had a long now, which is going really well. Okay. Uh, we had a short here which was a loser. We had a long here, which was a winner. So the two minute, last couple of days, it's not in a bad groove right now. We're near the highs though on gold, uh, but you've got to be looking long uh, at the moment uh, for long trades. But I wouldn't be going out on the larger time frames because we're near the highs. How's it performing on the three minute? Is it in the groove? Oh, this is a better groove. Why? I've had no losers over the last couple of days. Winner, long, short, winner, trading stock taken out. Long, winner, long, win, big winner, long, winner, short, didn't trigger, short, winner, long, we got a winner here because trading stops just been printed. Okay, can you see? Just by having a look at the chart, looking for the groove, is it in the groove on that time frame? I've gone one, two, right, three minute. Goal's pretty range at the moment, but on the three minute time frame, we're in the groove. Good looking trades. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. We've got to keep it simple. It's not rocket science. You've just got to find the groove. And, it'll, and you just, you've got to enter the trades. The thing you've got to talk about is that 
um, the risk, okay? It did, Gilbert, yes, the, 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 uh, the risk management and everything. And for some reason, I can't get the website to work for me to load up the blog. As you can see, it's not loading up here. If I do a control on F5, maybe that will work. Uh, I've just spoke, just chatted to the guys in America. It seems to be loading up for them, but it's not loading up for me. Rochelle, you can get it for TOS. It's on the website. Go to Indicators, Think or Swim, go to Roller Coaster, and subscribe now. It's that simple. Yeah. Yeah, Paul, I mean, the, the link works fine for me as well. All right, it must be me in Europe then. Twitter's been banning me and putting me back on and now the website's not working for me. Can you put the link in to the websites? Um, to those took that blog article, the latest one with, with the LP on it, Raoul, please. Sure. Uh, and also the link for the indicators page as well in the chat. Not bloody working. Okay, guys, that's it. Okay, it's nearly 1 p.m., 1 a.m. my time. Um, any more questions before I go? I'm not gonna look at any charts for you guys. This was more of an introduction to the roller coaster for a lot of people who's not seen it. The main thing is, look at this in the groove article. It's in the, um, in the chat there, the link. Does it open up when I open up the, yeah, see, it opens up. Okay, so I look at the, the time frames you want to look at when you're looking for the groove, how long you look back on that time frame. Uh, examples of Forex pairs, futures, gold, uh, futures there, stocks. Talk about risk to reward. Please read this article. This will help you out a lot, okay? No, you, d you, know, you don't see the trading stop when the trade tri when the trade triggers. That comes when the trade's been going for a while, Trevor, okay? All you see is the entry and the stop, okay? Am I going to be able to show you one in real time? Probably not. Um... Let's have a look across the time frame, see if we've got anything here. Um, it's going to be difficult. No. Hmm. It's going to be difficult to find one at this time as well. All you get is the stop and entry. The training stop starts to print when you're in profit, basically. Okay, guys, I'm going to call it a day there. Uh, I'll see you next week uh, for the last one for me for a while because what Raoul's going to do them. Next week, we're going to look at the trilogy. We're going to look at how to combine some of these three indicator suites we've got together to look for those high probability moves maybe a, a way to, um, to manage those moves once you're in as well, or to add to that move. Uh, for example, if you're on a, a, you, if you're on a roller coaster, um, short on ES now on the five minute, for example, um, you know, there could be times when we get uh, bits, breakouts to add to that position. You just don't know. Okay, so we're gonna look at things like that. Oh, you'll make your money back in a couple of trades, if not one trade. 
No problem. I'm glad. I mean, we're going to do these weekly webinars now. It's a better time for you. Raoul's going to be doing those um, because it's too late for me to do this permanently because I'll just get no sleep. Um, so, guys, hope you've uh, learned a lot from that. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be seeing some of you in New York. I know, Matty, you're going to be there. Gary, you're going to be there. Um, so, you know, I think Rob, you might be coming. Rob Cress, you might be coming. Um, so hopefully we'll spend a whole two days learning and getting this uh, going on all the indicator suites. So uh, enjoy, the, enjoy your weekend um, and I'll see you next week, everybody. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Cheers, Gary. Cheers, Matt.